things off uh, with someone who turned Nightmare Before Christmas into a design philosophy <laughs> and, who, <laughs> and who was featured as the Alpaca Reese at the Eurovision Song Contest 2016. Viva Yenazov! Yay! Hi everyone, okay let's start. Um, my name is Viva Ivarsson. I work as a game designer right now at a company called Sweet Studio in Stockholm. But before I go into my actual presentation and everything, I will talk about that studio and a bit of my background. So let's start. Um, before I came to game, I studied fashion design at uh, the high school. This was because I had a huge interest in cosplay since I was 15 years old. Um, and I think it's interesting because uh, what I really liked about cosplay and fashion design was to look at the concept and really like study it and try to figure out how will I do this. Uh, these are some of the characters I've made uh, as costumes. So for example, Reese from Animal Crossing was really tricky. Like how do I do this if I make it a human ver version of it? Um, and I think this was something that got me after high school when I uh, realized that fashion design was fun and all, but I didn't want to work with it full time. Uh, I think this like studying of concept art made me interested to look out game design or game graphics. Um, so when I realized that you could actually work with games, which I hadn't thought of earlier, uh, I got really excited and I took a distance course in uh, concept art. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, so after that I realized that I could study at uh, here <laughs> in uh, Visby. Uh, so I moved here and started my education. Uh, and game, I studied game design and graphics. Uh, but when I got here, I, I think I chose the graphics because I had worked with concept art in my fashion education. Um, but I really just wanted to understand how do you actually make games. I didn't know anything about this process when I started here. I just thought it, oh my god, it's cool <coughs> to work with games. I need to learn this. Uh, so I was really interested in a lot of things. And I realized later that game design was the thing that I really liked and really wanted to work further with. Um, in my first year, I made this game called Cobot uh, with a great group. It was a puzzle game where you are connected with another player. It's a co-op game, so you are two players and you are connected with this unbreakable link. And you have to carry items and solve this, uh, different puzzles together. Um, and then the next year we made a game called Micropolis, which also was a puzzle game with robots. Um, <laughs> and that's good because since I wasn't that great of a graphic person with animations, I could just make robots and they didn't need that much animation. It was just lift stuff. <laughs> uh, but in that game you played as a female uh, who had to merge other robots together to make new robots and solve puzzles in that way. Uh, that was fun. Uh, and I graduated in 2015 and uh, on my last, uh, in my last spring here I got an internship at a company called A Sweet Studio wh where I work right now. Um, so let me talk about that place. Oh yeah, here's a cool picture of how awesome I was while I studied here. <laughs> um, Sweet Studio, it started 2014 uh, but I got the, there in 2015, yes, when I graduated. Uh, we have around 20 employees. Um, so it's a pretty small company uh, in Stockholm. Uh, while I got there, the first time I got there, they were more focused at free-to-play, mobile, and uh, casual players. But right now we're moving towards more um, casual mid-core and PC and mobile. Um, it's also really cool because the company have this in-game publishing. Uh, so for employees called Sweet Labs. So if any one of us, the employees have an idea that we work on, on our own at home, we can take it to the company and say, oh, look at this cool thing I made. And they will help me to get it out on the market. And that's really cool because that's really, they really want us to work on other things too. And like really, really explore our different ideas. Um, but as I said, I got an internship there uh, my last spring here, uh, and then I continued working there while making my thesis. And I've been there for almost two years now. Um, so what have we made? The first, uh, when I got there, they had just released their first game called Flower Pop Adventure. 
uh, in the top over there. Um, and since it was already finished, I made some levels for it later on, uh, once it was released, uh, but didn't work on the actual project. Uh, then they started working on a concept called uh, Candy Bandit, which was a match-free game, um, where I was part of the overall like level design and feature design together with Malin Lövström, who sits here somewhere, uh, and talked on first day. <laughs> um, and then my most recent project that I've been part of is Show Off, which is a collectible card game with a fashion theme, uh, which we made together with a company which was earlier called Stardle, but today they are called Glorious Game Group. Uh, and I was a lead game designer for that, so that was cool. Um, all these games are available on App Store and Google Play if you want to try them out. Uh, we also released one final chaos, which was one of our projects that we made with Sweet Labs. Uh, so this was one uh, of, of our developers that made this like infinite runner where just space tries to kill you in all ways. Uh, so you just have to try to survive as long as possible. Uh, and that was with Sweet Lab, so that's cool. That was his own game that he made. Uh, and our most recent game, Sculptor's Turtle and the Moonshine Gang, which is our debut on PC, which is right now on green light. So if you like what we do, you can <laughs> go in there and vote on it and we will be happy. Um, so yeah, that's that. So what is this presentation? Uh, when I got here, I didn't really know what to talk about, uh, or when I got questioned if I wanted to come here. I got really excited though, because I really wanted to come here. <laughs> um, and I had all these different projects that I have been working on. Uh, so I started to think, okay, what have I learned? And I came up with a lot of things that I learned. Uh, and when I just Google, what is this? Because I didn't know what I was talking about. I found this glorious picture at one of my favorite characters of all time, Jack Skellington from Nightmare Before Christmas. And I realized we had a lot in common what, um, with the lessons I've learned and what I think maybe he learned throughout the movie. Uh, so this presentation is called Seven Lessons to Learn from Jack Skellington. <laughs> Very grown up. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry if some of you haven't seen this movie, because uh, I will spoil it for you. And it's a great movie. Uh, but hopefully you will be even more curious about the movie after this and you can watch it and be like, ooh, ah, mm. um, So, uh, yeah. And I will also talk about this from a game design perspective, since that's what I'm working as. But I think that a lot of these questions might uh, be good for everyone, even if you work as a programmer or artist. So, let's begin. Um, Nightmare Before Christmas is about this person called Jack Skellington. He is the king of Halloween, the pumpkin king, and he has lived in Halloween town all his life. He's only briefed and seen scary things, uh, and his goal in life is to prepare the perfect Halloween. But one day he stumbles upon a door in a forest and he discovers Christmas town, which is this wonderful place. Everything is just pretty lights, people smile, it's cookies and cakes everywhere, uh, and he's gets really excited and happy about this. Uh, and for me, I think this is somewhat what it's like when I get my first idea for a concept as well. I get this first, like, uh, maybe I just hear a song or read a book or play another game and I go, oh, this is what I'm going to do. This is a perfect idea. And if someone would ask me about this concept, I wouldn't really be able to explain it because I would just be, but you don't get it. It's great. <laughs> this is the best idea ever. Uh, and I have to share it with the world. And I love this time of the beginning of the concept because you can just like make love to the concept and just uh, uh, <laughs> enjoy it and that's great. Um, so for my first lesson, enjoy the honeymoon with your inspiration and concept because it won't last forever. Um, after this, pitching. I'm sure a lot of you know about this part because uh, you made it here on the education. Jack hurries back to Halloween Town and will explain Christmas to everyone. The problem is everyone in the audience is from Halloween Town and they don't know what Christmas is. They haven't seen this thing. So he tries to explain it and like shows a present. Like, ha -ha! And they're like, ah, what is a present even? Um, but they get excited. They notice that Jack is excited about this. So maybe this is a cool thing. Uh, but even Jack can tell when he's done that they didn't quite get his idea. Um, so I think this is something 
I think this is very important as well. You need to like talk about your ideas because talking about your ideas make you realize what people don't understand about it. Uh, I know that people talk about teaching in this way, like the best way to learn is to teach someone. Um, but I think it's the same thing with pitching, like the best way to let your project or concept grow is to actually talk about, pe talk about it with people. Uh, tell people about it, see how they react. You will have a lot of negative feedback as well, but maybe that will also help you help the concept to grow. Like what are they questioning? Why are they questioning this? Oh, they thought it was a lot like this game, but why? How can I make it in another way? Um, <laughs> I actually had, when we made our big game project in our second year, uh, we had decided on a group we wanted to work with, but we didn't have a concept. So we had a lot of this uh, brainstorming meeting when we just sat down and were like, okay, what are we going to do? And I had just, it was Christmas and it was cozy and it was kind of this time of year. Uh, and I had listened to Annie Lennox cover of God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. Uh, and I had one of these inspiration moments when I was like, oh, this is the best idea ever. Uh, we will make a winter concept. And I just brought the music and played them the song. And like, oh, now you get it, right? <laughs> but they didn't, of course. Um, and I think this is also, also something that I learned. And I, of course, they won't like, get it if I don't explain it to them, like what is it, what, what is it with this song that is awesome, what is it that is cool. Um, but that helped me, that helped me to understand that, okay, maybe not the song, but I need to really look into this, what it is. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, so that's the lesson here, dare to talk about your ideas and discuss them with both friends and foes because all feedback is important. So once uh, Jack doesn't understand or really can't explain his concept, he goes back to his study, back to the drawing board. And I think this is also something that you need to do. Once you get your negative feedback, try to analyze it. Why did they say that? Uh, and what was it that really got you excited about this core concept? Even if you try to explain it to people, maybe you explained it in the wrong way. Maybe it was something else that you really wanted to like present to them. Um, for me at Sweet, I make a lot of different concepts. Um, so when I make each of these concepts, I make a PowerPoint similar to this one, which is different slides, just to make, make me just put down the most um, important notes about each, each concept. Uh, and one slide I always make is inspiration, which I make like two slides after the first summary of the concept. Um, and then I try to, in the inspiration slide, I try to come up with three of the most important inspiration sources. Like what was it with the Christmas concept that got me really in interested? What was it that I really wanted to use in the game? Uh, and on these different uh, inspirations, I also try to pin down up to three points of what is it in this inspiration that I got inspired by. Um, and I think this is very useful to like try to keep the core uh, and understanding of your concept. So while I was making this presentation, I had a crazy idea. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, the point. Uh, <laughs> this was something that uh, Adam, I think, taught us when we, when we studied here. He said, uh, if you see something you like, break it open, steal its power and use it. Uh, and that's something I try to do with this inspiration slide as well. I try to find what I like, uh, and use it into something new. Um, but my crazy idea was that I might show you how I actually do this uh, and let's make it in the Night Before Christmas team. Uh, <coughs> so I will try to explain Christmas to people who only know Halloween. Uh, and this is tricky. It's a lot more trickier than I usually do it because normally I do this for people who know the real world. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the first thing I came up with was trick or treating. Uh, and here my thoughts were that, well, at Christmas you give each other treats, right? Uh, let's just not mention the trick part. Uh, and it's also a very social thing. You do something together with people. You go with friends and family and you visit your neighbors. Uh, so I think this could somewhat give a Halloween uh, person the right idea. The other thing I came up with was the witch. Uh, because 
Christmas also have a flying person with a headdress. Uh, <laughs> and it's this feeling of magic and mystery that you get like the whole sense of oh, something magic is happening this evening. What could it be? Um, and as I said, this is really tricky <laughs> because uh, yeah, I will show you a real example of how you do it later. But do you have any ideas of what we could have for the last point? Of if you were in Halloween, do you have anything that is similar in Christmas? I got stuck here. I had I have one last one, but if you have any better ideas. That's good, it's tricky for you too. <laughs> okay, what I came up with was spider webs. Mm. Uh, <laughs> this is because of the pattern design. I thought it was somewhat like snowflakes. Um, and also I thought of the decorations uh, inspired by nature. Like in <coughs> Halloween you have spiders and spider webs and all these creepy creatures. Uh, but in Christmas you also have like <coughs> snowflakes and a Christmas tree and reindeers and what not of all kinds of animals. Um, but okay, let's do this in the normal way. Um, <coughs> the Christmas concept <laughs> that I talked about that never was. Uh, I think this is how I would explain my winter concept uh, that I didn't. If I today would try to explain my, oh, let's do this for big game, uh, I would make it something like this. Uh, and I think it's important here to choose inspirations that people can at least just Google to find it. Uh, Scandinavian folklore, monster design, like they can Google Scandinavian folklore and look at the monsters and like, okay, what, what does they look like? What is the main idea? Forest, because that's very typical for Scandinavian folklore, that it's taking part there. Um, Long Dark, I don't know if you've played it, but it's a very cool game. Uh, and this is something that whoever I showed this to could Google it and find a trailer or something. Uh, winter and survival uh, and shadow of Colossus, uh, big enemies. I want like big trolls or something in the forest. Uh, and this feeling of hope that there is, we will make this. Um, and I think that you can, you can choose to not have this if you're like pitching for a class or something, you can just skip the slide if you want to. But for me, it's important just for me to keep this because in, while the project starts, you can always go back and like, uh -huh, this project just feels like it's falling apart right now. What, can I, what was it that we really wanted to do? And you can go back to this and be like, okay, so this is like the main inspiration for this. Uh, and I think that's cool for the group al also to be able to look at the inspiration. Like, okay, this was something around here. Uh, even though my biggest inspiration for this was the Annie Lennox song, I wouldn't add it here because I've already tried it and it sucked. Uh, <laughs> and also just because you can't really explain music to people with notes like, oh, listen to that drum. Uh, it's, no, it won't work. Uh, when I make concepts for Sweet, it's also important to remember what, what company are you making your pitches for. Like I couldn't make a MMO concept right now because we don't make that at my company. Uh, so maybe some ideas you will have to like, okay, this is a cool idea, but just then make this pitch quickly and hide it away somewhere for greater days. No, I don't know. <laughs> Yay, clients. Um, right now we have our concept. We have worked on our concept. We've tried to like pin down what is our concept. Uh, but when I started working at Sweet, I realized that we also work with clients there. Um, and this was something new to me. In school, we had <coughs> like, I was nervous for pitching for students and teachers, but then suddenly this was like the big company that would pay me for doing it. Uh, so we had to pitch for clients. Uh, and how you make a contact with a client might differ. At our company, it's either that we have made uh, some pitches before and been like, okay, this is our free concept that we really want to make. Let's send them to different companies and try if, to see if they are interested. It might always also be that a client contacts you uh, and says like, oh, you look cool. I've seen what you've done earlier. Could you make us a bubble shooter? Uh, and then we make different concepts for them. And once we find something that works, uh, we sign a contract. And from that moment, you have to realize that the client is also your customer. Uh, they are customers and they also pay your salary pretty much. Uh, so this is a very important contact. And it might be the greatest thing ever and it might be really bad <laughs> to have a client. Uh, I've had both 
Uh, I've had clients that were our best QA testers ever. They were like the only person that would actually read my whole game design document from start to finish and come with concrete feedback and how I could make it even better and what we could improve. Um, but I've also had clients that asked us to like to all those things like you have to make a game that is nothing like anything other you've ever seen on a mobile. Um, but then once we have made all this concept and come to them for the next meeting, they say something, no, it has to be something that actually exists in game and is the best game ever. And you have to point at that game that makes the much money and show them that show us that they have it too. Um, and I think that's when you really have to use your communication skills. Like um, maybe people are saying something, but they don't say it in the right way. And you need to learn to listen and also uh, ask questions. In high school, I studied Japanese for a while. Uh, and my sensei uh, told me, <laughs> we had to call him that. Um, <laughs> uh, he told us that uh, you can either Wait, I wrote this down somewhere so I can have the exact words. Um, you can either ask and risk to sound stupid, or you may stay silent and stay stupid. Uh, and I think that's very important and something I've brought with me since then. Uh, I ask a lot of questions, sometimes stupid questions, but I've also learned a lot by asking questions. For example, if they say, make us a bubble shooter, maybe you have to ask some more questions than like, huh, I've played bubble shooters, I know what they want. Uh, like, continue to ask them questions. And that only shows that you are also interested in them and want to know their idea of what they actually want you to do. Um, so with clients, try to work on your communication skills. Uh, realize that they are the customers um, and ask questions. Um, this is, by the way, the mayor in uh, Halloween Town for Jack that doesn't really like that he's working on Christmas instead of Halloween. So then we have teamwork. You have a concept. You have someone paying you for the concept. And now you just have to make it. Yay. Uh, for Jack, this means that he um, puts everyone in Halloween Town into work. And they start working on Christmas and trying to understand how will we make Christmas happen in Halloween Town. Uh, and he gets really excited because his vision is actually worked on now uh, and something is happening here. Um, but he don't really realize that they are a team and he have to understand that, that they don't really get it. They still don't get it. Um, so that's what you have to keep in mind. Uh, I think that game designer is an awesome job. I really love it. Um, but I also think it comes with a lot of responsibility, um, at least in my position where we are a kind of small company. Because uh, everyone, I think everyone in the business have ideas for the project they're working on or maybe new concepts. Um, and if you just go ask them, they might actually help you to make the concept stronger. You're not alone in this. So they might both be helping you if you have a tough time. But it's also a nice gesture to just ask people uh, and discuss the game with them, make them feel like you're actually a team. Um, Mm. I had um, Marlene Lovenberg again <laughs> put up a nice note at our office once that said uh, compliments are like a health kit or something like that. Uh, and I think that's really pretty. Uh, I think it's very important to realize that even if you, once you get to a company, you might work at a lot of concepts that never makes it. Uh, you might work on like both art and code and game design might work uh, months on the concepts that they then like cancel or they change drastically or something uh, and try to like have open eyes and see when someone is actually struggling with these changes. Um, so I've stolen what Marlene said uh, and say compliments are like a health kit. Don't waste them. But if you see someone who needs them, give it to them because uh, that will just make the whole uh, working atmosphere better. Uh, and help everyone out. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> then once you have a finished project, uh, or kind of finished project, you have your teamwork, you have someone paying you, you have a concept, uh, you might have a soft launch. Uh, and this was also something, I don't know if you know what a soft launch is. For me, it was pretty new, uh, but 
Uh, for us, it worked um, like this. If you have a game that is pretty much done uh, and you know which target country you have, like for uh, Show Off, our card game, we know that uh, we knew that we wanted to release it in USA. Uh, so we had a soft launch um, and we soft launched in Canada, Argentina and Sweden. Uh, we want countries that are interested in the product but are not that our most important target audience. And this is because if we release a game uh, and we, this is like a big playtest, so we might fall upon like different errors or bugs or similar stuff. Uh, and if we find that, we don't want our target audience to find them and be like, oh, I will never play this game again. Uh, so we try it in other countries. Uh, Canada, because it's very standard for mobile games to try it there, and it's also very close to USA. Um, Argentina, because they are very big on card games. Uh, so we knew we wanted to see how our card game worked on them. We, they also don't monetize, mon monetize, monetize, uh, you get it, uh, <laughs> well. So even if they wouldn't like the game or even if they would love it, uh, we don't like waste money on them uh, because we won't get that much money from them either way. So uh, we can just find out if there's a first great interest. Uh, and then Sweden, because we're in Sweden, uh, so just for friends and family and being able to like play test it at the office uh, and with people we know. Um, and as I said, soft launch is pretty much like a big uh, game test uh, or play test. So if you find errors, don't panic like this guy. Uh, it will, you will probably find errors and that's what this whole like session is for. Uh, you will find things, you will try things. Um, in soft launch, you often look at different data uh, and these are the three main points we looked at uh, in show off at least. Uh, it's amount of players, how many are actually downloading the game and just trying it out. Uh, retention, how many players are um, revisiting the game, coming back to the game and how often are they coming back each day, each week, each month and why? Why are they coming back like after two weeks and not every day? Can we change that in some way? And we try to like iterate on the game. Uh, and also monetization, uh, do we make any money? on what, uh, why, uh, and what happens if we like um, make something cheaper or more expensive? Will that make us more money or less money? Uh, and that's very interesting to look at, actually. Um, hmm? um, so if you find bugs, try to just fix them and don't panic. I've been in projects where we have a lot of bugs, but people have been so sure that everyone knows about this that they know that it will be fixed, <laughs> but no one like writes it down and puts it in the planning. So if you see something, don't panic, uh, but make sure to document them and fix them. Uh, because if no one writes it down, no one talks about it, it won't get to Jira or Scrum, uh, and you won't be able to actually fix them. No one will be assigned to the actual task. Um, in soft launch, you often have goals with the different data points. So if you reach these goals or if you don't, this will affect the duration of the soft launch. It will be shorter or longer. Once you reach it, you're ready for the big release uh, and you have the final product. For Jack, uh, this didn't really work out. Um, he got uh, through a lot of hard work negative feedback and a smaller depression. Uh, but it worked out pretty good. Uh, it, not at all as he had imagined. He didn't like become the perfect Santa or something. Uh, but his city at least understood Christmas somehow. So it might have worked out. Uh, and I think this is a lot like it is in the game industry too with projects. Uh, you, have, you still have this core idea of what it was that you wanted to do. And I think that's a very important job for at least the game designer to like, keep that focus and what was it that you wanted to do. Um, and if you're able to keep that throughout the whole progress, even if it changed for better and worse, uh, you will still have something that is quite good in the end. Uh, and Jack says it like, uh, what the heck, I went and did my best. Uh, and I think that's also like the feeling in the end of a concept, even if it gets cancelled or destroyed or changed a lot, uh, you still have learned a lot in each project. And as long as you just carry on 
and keep on working on different projects, it will probably just help you to get even further and learn more. And one day <laughs> you will get to that special concept that will stay with you until the end. I don't think you want to miss that. Um, so that's pretty much it for me. I rushed through this, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry if there was a lot of spoilers. Uh, <laughs> but now you can watch the movie and get really excited about the movie because it's great. Um, yes, and I will take your questions now. After I've said this, that you should stay <laughs> curious because it's a really exciting industry to be part of. <laughs> now I will take questions. <laughs> If there is any. Over there. Uh, great talk. Uh, what is your favorite part of these seven steps? Is it the first crazy part? Yes, I do. I do. <laughs> or yeah, uh, I think in my uh, at our studio recently. I mean, I think uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I came to my boss and I asked, um, "What do you want me to do now? What should I work on?" And she said, "Ah, like, oh, maybe you could just. Uh, I think you should just sit down and make a lot of different ideas for concepts." And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> okay." <laughs> they didn't have to tell me twice. Uh, so yes, that is probably the best part. But then I like the whole idea in the beginning of the project when you really try to start a production and start figuring out everything and discuss with people. I like that. Uh, so uh, when we worked during school we worked at pretty small teams and then when you started in, in the industry you worked in a pretty small team as well. Uh, so what was the biggest difference uh, because both are you know fairly small teams uh, so the process of making the game uh, should be pretty similar, but what was the biggest difference? Uh, I think it was both that I worked with free to play because that was something I hadn't worked with earlier. You had to think about this whole monetization part earlier. It was like, we make a cool game and we just put it out there and we'll make lots of money. Poof, it will work out. Uh, stupid student. Uh, <laughs> but uh, once I got there, we worked with monetization for free to play, and that was a whole other world to be like, okay, but how? And I also point, think that when I studied here, we were a little bit, maybe too much, against free-to-play. Uh, it was this whole feeling that people, oh, mobile games and free-to-play, oh, that's the devil. Uh, so uh, I think maybe that was also a big like step for me to actually be like, now I'm in the free-to-play market. What do I do here? Uh, how do we work with this? But that was really exciting. I learned a lot about that. So how do you get ideas for pitches? Do you have any big pools of inspiration that you always go to when you want to have something new? No, I don't think so. I, I mean, I'm a nerd in every way that everyone else is in here, obviously. Uh, but I watch a lot of movies. I read a lot of books. I listen to a lot of music. Uh, and whatever I get inspired by is just like, oh, let's do this. And then, of course, I mean, this thing that our, my boss said to me, just make a lot of concepts, that was cool because we're just in this state like we can both do mobile and PC. So that just was a lot more wider audience for me to work with. Uh, earlier it has been only mobile and then I've also, we've, it's been more restricted before. Uh, so that's really cool. Now I can work with more things. Um, hi, great presentation. I love Thanks. your format. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, when you start on, on a new concept, what is generally the first thing that grips you? Is it like, oh, this would be like a cool mechanic, or is it a setting, or is it just like a feeling that you get from something? What's like the first important thing? Uh, I think it differs a lot. Uh, right now, I, I also try to like understand the studio. Like what, even if I get, like I said before, I might get an idea like, oh, the b best and biggest single player adventure game ever. Uh, but I realize that we might not do that right now at our company. Uh, so, even, but even if I get that idea, I try to like just sum it down to get it out of my head uh, and then start on something new. Uh, but mostly it's, I look at our different platforms and kinds of game that we look at and try to get inspired by that and then I usually have some idea of a setting from things I've seen before or got inspired by. Any more questions? No? Thank you. Then I think we close, yeah. <laughs>